In a recent landmark judgment, the Supreme Court of India delineated the contours of judicial authority in regard to policy formulation, particularly in the sensitive and specialized domain of the armed forces. This case revolving around the coveted position of the Judge Advocate General in the Indian Air Force not only underscores the delicate balance of power within the Republic's institutions, but also serves as a testament to the judiciary's self-imposed restraint in matters of policy. At the heart of this legal odyssey was an Air Commodore's grievance against the opacity shrouding his non-consideration for the role of Judge Advocate General, a position paramount not only in its advisory prowess, but also for its legal sagacity within the aerial wing of the Indian Defence Services. The Armed Forces Tribunal, initially approached to adjudicate this grievance, ventured beyond its traditional adjudicatory role, mandating the government to craft a policy for such appointments within a prescribed timeline. The Armed Forces Tribunal's directive ignited a debate on judicial reach and its intersection with the executive's policy-making prerogative. The Supreme Court, in its wisdom, found itself at a legal crossroads tasked with evaluating the Armed Forces Tribunal's authority under the magnifying glass of constitutional jurisprudence and the doctrine of separation of powers, a foundational pillar ensuring the harmonious operation of the state's functions. The Armed Forces Tribunal Act 2007 indeed empowers the Armed Forces Tribunal to adjudicate on matters concerning the services of the Armed Forces members. However, the leap from adjudication to policy directive was a path fraught with constitutional implications. It raised the curtain on the age-old debate of judicial activism versus judicial restraint, a debate that has seen courts globally wrestling with the extent of their intervention in legislative or executive domains. The Supreme Court's decision to quash the Armed Forces Tribunal's order was not merely a reiteration of its jurisdictional limits, but a broader commentary on the sanctity of the separation of powers. By emphasizing that the Armed Forces Tribunal's mandate was to resolve individual disputes rather than engage in policy formulation, the court reaffirmed the inviolable boundaries that define the roles of the judiciary, the legislature and the executive. The judgment is a clarion call for judicial bodies to exercise caution and restraint, especially in matters where policy nuances and specialized expertise dictate the need for executive decision. It acknowledges the judiciary's pivotal role in interpreting the law, but also respects the intricate balance of power that governs the polity. While the Supreme Court's ruling brings closure to a contentious issue, it also shines a spotlight on the underlying concerns related to transparency and meritocracy in the appointment of high-ranking military positions. The call for a clear, transparent and merit-based selection process is not just about adhering to democratic principles, but also about fortifying the armed forces' integrity and efficiency. In essence, this judgment does not close the chapter on the quest for fairness and transparency in military appointments, but rather opens a new discourse on how such ideals can be achieved within the constitutional and legal framework of India. It is a reminder that while courts may not dictate policy, their judgments can indeed influence the principles that guide policy formulation. To conclude this, the Supreme Court, through its judicious appraisal, has not only protected the sanctity of the separation of powers, but also underscored the importance of judicial restraint. This decision is a testament to the judiciary's role as a guardian of constitutional values, ensuring that every power, however mighty, operates within its defined legal boundaries. As we move forward, this judgment will undoubtedly serve as a pivotal reference point for the roles and limits of judicial intervention in policy matters, especially in the context of India's complex and nuanced governance structure.